My name is Brian Fried. I am an inventor for over 20 years now, personally. I've been working on all different types of inventions in all different types of categories. I've authored three books. Um, I've also been an on-air guest on QVC for, uh, up to, for about two and a half years. I have founded the National Inventor Club. I've used to run inventor clubs on Long Island, where I'm from in New York, um, for 15 years. And recently I converted it into the National Inventor Club. But as far as an inventor, I have 15 issued patents. I've licensed products, so I've earned royalties from them. And I manufacture other products and I, I make them with a factory and I sell them myself. And I'm excited to share my experiences with you. So when you have an invention idea, you can do something with it and see if you can make money most importantly. All right, so let's get to my slides and let's start off here. So we started off by turning your invention idea into a business. So think about this. Have you had an idea before? Are you somebody that is working on one right now? Maybe you've had one in the past and you said, ah, I'll just leave it alone. I'm just gonna move on to, maybe somebody else will invent it or maybe I'll find it, I'll try to see if it's online, but then all of a sudden you get distracted and poof, it's gone. So there's people out there that when you come up with an idea, you stop and you capture that idea. So think about it, you're sleeping, you wake up, there's an alarm clock. You end up in the bathroom, right? So you're either brushing your hair, brushing your teeth. Think about all the routines that you're involved with on a daily basis. So after you get ready, you're having breakfast, then you're out the door, you might take public transportation, you might be in your own car. There's things that are going on that, I don't know, maybe sometimes at some point, something annoys you. <laughs> That's what happens to me. I keep coming up with ideas when things annoy me. And now it's kind of routine to say, let me stop and figure out if it's something that I should work on or not. And that's the thing that you need to think about. It doesn't matter what type of idea it is. You can be in any different type of situation. You could be at the airport and be a people watcher, but think about the things that are around you. And all of a sudden you start to say, you know what? Things that I'm working on right now or I'm sorry, things that are happening right now, is that good the way it is? Should it be a little bit better? Maybe I can do something or tweak it to make it so I can call my own. So that's what I'm gonna go through with you today. All right, so I came up with this great idea. I get very excited, um, um, oh my goodness. This could be the one that can be the next gazillion dollar product. So is it something that's yours? Well, you might go onto the website, you might go into Google and do a Google search, and it might not necessarily be out there, and you start to get really excited. Or you end up going into Walmart, and you walk down the aisles, and you're going, oh my gosh, I don't see my product there. I'm going to be a gazillionaire. A lot of times, I think people end up searching online, and they say, wow, I haven't seen this invention out there. I'm clicking through those those tabs and I'm clicking through all the links. I don't see it, or maybe I don't wanna see it because I wanna keep moving. So I think that when you come up with an idea, the first thing you should do, it doesn't cost you anything, is to go online, do some generic searching. So come up with the idea and come up with kind of the generic name. So if I came up with a pen with a light bulb, I'm gonna put in ballpoint pen with a with a lighted top, ballpoint pen with a bulb, you know, just LED light, just different things to see what comes up. And I'm gonna be real with my search. I'm gonna make sure that when I'm working on something that I wanna know that I'm gonna work on it and I might make some money with it and I'm gonna spend my time, money, energy, effort on it. I wanna make sure that it's something that I can call my own. So. If you're finding things that are similar, but you're not quite sure, that's okay. Capture that link, capture that URL, and just keep building up. So eventually you can get what's called a, a professional patent search, where you can have the things that you came up with and what your idea is, and then they'll go into the US Patent and Trademark Office website, and they'll pull prior art, they'll look at the claims of other patents, to see if yours is enough of a difference to call your own. That's called a patentability opinion. 
But the first thing is go online, check around, see if your ideas are out there. Go into stores, see if your idea is on the shelves already. If there's things similar, just capture those ideas just to keep them kind of in a bank of, of uh, different types of products or ideas that are similar to yours. And the patent search is really important because you might not see it out there, but it could be in the, somebody could have patented it already. And it might not be that it's out in the market, but they still might have intellectual property protection on it. So really important is the idea that you came up with your own. So that's one that I really spend a lot of time on when I'm talking to inventors with an idea to make sure that it is something that you should put your time, money, energy, and effort into to make sure that it's yours. And you'll have some options as we'll go through later on. I just wanted to pause for one second. I mentioned earlier that I was uh, I have 15 issued patents. I have a lot of patents that actually never made it through. But I'm not inventing heavy-duty rocket science type of, uh, of um, inventions, but I'm coming up with things, and I'm going through, and I'm thinking about, uh, first off, you have to stop and capture the idea, like I mentioned earlier, and go through the vetting of it. And the same thing here is I go through these steps to make sure that I can call it my own. Okay, so now what? We did that patent search, and I went to a, a professional patent search. Uh, usually a patent attorney or agent can do it for you also. And it came back and it said, Brian, you came up with something that's too similar to what already exists in the market. If you end up doing it, you're gonna infringe on somebody else's intellectual property. Or it came back and the patent that was on it is over 20 years old. So now it becomes public domain. That means anybody can make it. So we can talk about that afterwards. Then there's another thought that comes back and it says, ding, ding, ding. Based on what you have and what's already out there, it looks like you have a pretty good shot at intellectual property protection of a patent. I appreciate that and I appreciate the opinion, but I might get a second or third opinion before I start putting again, my time, money, energy, and effort into to make sure that I could call it my own. So those are the steps that I go through to evaluate what my next steps are gonna be. And a lot of it is from my own research and my own time of going into the stores online, putting in variations of it, doing my own Google patent search or going on USPTO.gov patent search to see if there's similar things out there and then get a professional opinion if it's something that I could do my own. So what I came up with, is there enough of a difference? Do I stop here? Did I hit a brick wall and move on and I should move on to my next idea? Well, that's what we're going to talk about continuing in this presentation. So a lot of you have watched different shows out there. You hear the term royalties, licensing, maybe manufacturing, right? There's a lot of entrepreneurs and innovators that are on the uh, on the presentation today that you've come up with an idea, whether it's a business or a service, and you're always coming up and innovating and inventing new ideas. So what does all this mean? Licensing to earn royalties. Well, let's say I come up with an invention and I am limited on funds or I'm very busy and I choose not to really want to go into manufacturing, which I'll speak to you about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with this idea. I'm going to go through my searching. I'm going to get a good patentability opinion. I'm going to make a prototype. I'm going to do 3D CAD drawing uh, with an engineer or an industrial designer, and I'm going to get it to a point where I can make a decision of having these options of licensing versus, manufacture, uh, versus manufacturing. So licensing means that I'm going to give my intellectual property most of the time, that's how it works, um, to a company that already has manufacturing capability, whether they outsource or they have internal manufacturing. And also they have distribution, where they, whether they use a third party sales rep, an outside sales rep, or they have internal sales reps that will go and distribute, go to the retailers and buyers to get your product in the stores. So licensing means that I'm going to take my product, I'm going to go to a company that already has these capabilities, and I'm going to see if they want to add my product to their product line. And if they say, Brian, this is great, wonderful, let's do it. 
what they're going to do is they're going to rent the rights to my intellectual property. They'll manufacture it, distribute it, and I'll earn a royalty. Typically, it's from a percentage of the wholesale cost of what they're selling it to the buyer for. And I get paid quarterly, and I get to see sell-through reports of how many of the products are sold in different retail stores and the different variations of my inventions that are sold. And I collect royalty checks. And uh, I've been doing this for over 18 years now. Um, I've been working with a lot of other inventors to do the same thing. And it's just amazing to see your product out there for the reason you came up with it. The other side of it is the manufacturing. So maybe I've tried to license it and I hit a brick wall. They might not see the vision that I see with it potentially being out there as a good marketable, good opportunity, good window of opportunity for, for whatever category it's in. And that's something interesting, because if you're trying to license a product, there's some variables to it. You want to make sure that there's enough of a margin to be able to have the potential licensee. So you would be the licensor as the person, the inventor, and then there's the licensee. So there needs to be enough margin. They need to know that they're going to be able to sell enough of them. And Obviously, you you should be a good partner with them, and and you should have done a good amount of the work. Sometimes, you know, I, I've I've worked with products that have just been made out of cardboard, and we end up uh, we ended up earning royalties from it, and it was on QVC. Then on the other side, there's the manufacturing. So, what does it take to manufacture? And we'll get into that. Obviously, of being able to find a factory and manufacturing, and then going through all the logistics of uh, producing the products, accounts payable, account receivable, you're really managing a business with manufacturing. So we'll get into that a little bit deeper. So who are you, right? Sometimes you think about it and you came up with this idea and you didn't wake up thinking, hey, I'm going to be an inventor. Most of the time you're doing something, you might even be in your own business, in your own industry right now, and you come up, like I, I was talking to a, a construction guy, and he ended up coming up with an invention for construction workers. So a lot of times people in the industry that you're in will come up with new ways to help you to actually do your job better. Or it might be for somebody else. You're watching somebody else do something and you can see that it could be done better. All of a sudden, you're going to be learning a new industry. But really, most of the time, people are just, coming up with ideas and you already have a full-time job, you're kind of out there, you, you have your life going on and all of a sudden this idea ends up coming and hitting you and saying, okay, what am I gonna do now? So a lot of times people end up making their inventions into, into their side hustle. And look, you come up with this idea, you have this amazing feeling in your stomach of excitement, you want it to change your life, you want it to change and help your family, you want to make a ton of money, be a gazillionaire with your invention, but you also have to think about all the other things that you're doing in your life. So all of a sudden, this idea came to you. Are, is it going to be a side hustle? Is it something that you're going to give it a shot as a manufacturer and see if it's something that you can build up and now convert into your full-time job? Maybe you want to make it into a complete business where you came up with an invention and now you want to add other products around it to be able to make it into a brand uh, or just the one product turns into multiple and variables of the product to end up being a bigger company. So a lot of people think about what am I going to do with this invention? I'm busy. I have my life. I have my family. I don't have time for this. So that's where you kind of figure out and you understand. And that's what I've really had a chance to do with people is to understand who you are and then think about what the product is and what the window of opportunity is to help you to make better decisions. And that's what you need to do for yourself is to say, you know what, do I want this to be my full-time job? I don't know what that means. I don't know. Can I put use, have two full-time jobs? So these are the things that you need to evaluate to figure out if it's something that you should license and let somebody who has the, or the company that has manufacturing capabilities and distribution do their thing and you earn a percentage of it? Or do you want to really start your own business, be a startup entrepreneur, and really be able to commercialize this invention? What's the difference? Well, I've had successful products with licensing. I've had not successful products with licensing. 
based on the market and, and how it's kind of sold out there. And then on the other side, I've manufactured products and I've had successful ones and subpar successful ones. So you don't really know because you're coming up with a new idea and nobody's really sold it yet. I mean, there's similar type of things out there. I mean, how many collapsible egg trays have you seen? You know what I mean? So you got to test the market and you got to find niches for it to see who wants it. The reason why I like to come up with kitchen gadgets is because everybody has a kitchen. When I went on QVC, if I just went on here and I said, this is for, for bread, this is only for bread, then maybe you like bread, maybe you don't like bread. But when I said, how many people have cereal bags and freezer bags and so on, so on, so on, how many people have a kitchen? My window of opportunity was much bigger. So I've licensed these, I've manufactured them. And those are the things that you need to think about. So it's kind of timing for your life and also financial situation of what you can afford and what you might be limited on. Okay, so you came up with this idea, you ended up going through and doing that online search, the patent search, you maybe had a patentability opinion done. You started to think about who you are and what kind of timing you have to figure out if it's something that you might want to license, you might want to earn royalties. But either way, you want to bring this thing to life. You want to take the idea out of your head and put it in front of you. So you've heard 3D CAD. There's so many different programs out there for just regular people, just basic, that we can figure it out ourselves. Or you hire somebody that actually does 3D CAD. I'm kind of outdating myself, but when I first started inventing, and I needed to make a 3D printer, which I don't know if people have seen, like there's desktop 3D printers now that it just goes back and forth and it puts layer of filament on top of each other in different types of material to end up making a prototype for yourself. So it was hard to even find a, a regular printer, 3D printer back in the day to make prototypes. So what did I used to do when, when I, I was, single, then I got married, I had my daughter. So I went through the stages of, of my life. And I remember recently, <laughs> my um, I used to come up with these toy inventions. My daughter, Alana, is now, she's going to be 21 in a couple of weeks. But I came up with all these toy inventions. And I used to go to the store and, and buy all kinds of toys. And I used to rip the guts out of them. I showed it to her first. Sometimes she played for a minute or two. And then I take it, rip it apart. And I end up making my own prototypes out of it. And I put it away in a in a closet. And recently, she opened the closet and found all of, all the things that she was missing. But um, no, look, you want to try to get to as good of a prototype as you can to really call it something that like to take it out of your head and make it a reality, make it real. And it doesn't have to be exactly the way it needs to be for a finished product. But you want to get it close. And I could tell you that I've drawn chicken scratch, drawn kind of. Uh, what my idea might look like. And then I might have had somebody draw it a little better for me. And I tried to license it to earn royalties. And I didn't get that great of results. People got the concept. But I could tell you that when I ended up making a prototype, it changed my life because I had a chance to meet buyers and it converted into, I want that. You know, I, I understand it's a prototype, but I see it. And when I made it so it can work the way that it should, and I got it as close to what it should be. That's when really my invention career really kicked off. So there's a lot of options for you these days. You might It might not be a, a, a plastic type of invention or product. It could be made out of wood. I work with inventors that have uh, sewing projects. So we call it cut and sew. You could make it out of metal. So maybe it's bending and cutting of metal, wood. Whatever it is, try to get it as close as possible that you can. And look, if you could take pieces of things that already exist and put them together, that helps too. It's quick, easy. You can just order it and all of a sudden it comes. I, I did it recently. I just buy things and I kind of figure out if I'm what I'm doing is going to make it better. And then I go through the stages like I went with you. The steps, patent search, prototyping, you know, and that's where I'm at at this point in, in the presentation. All right. So we kind of made our idea and we brought it to life. Somehow, some way to be able to ex uh, ex explain it, describe it, show it as much as we can at this point. The next is, again, bringing it to life. Let's continue. So I want to protect it. 
Uh, you've heard, and I hear a lot of people say, yes, I got to this point, or maybe this is brand new for you. You can, you can file what's called a provisional patent application. And what that does is that gives you the right for one year to say that your idea is patent, uh, patent pending while you're exploring the market of like what we spoke about earlier, licensing or manufacturing. You can come up with a good trademarkable name. So maybe that invention that you came up with is over 20 years old and now it's in the public domain. So you, me and your neighbor can make it. So maybe we came up with a good name. People have heard of the Snuggie out there. The Snuggie was invented many, many years ago, but a company said, you know what? It would be cute to do this blanket with sleeves and call it the Snuggie. And then the next day you heard the Slanket and you heard all these different versions of the Snuggie because it's public domain. And if you want, you can make one too. So you can use uh, trademarks as, for the name. If it's something that you actually use in commerce and you, you file it with the US Patent and Trademark Office, you turn your registrate your trademark, the TM, into an R. So a lot of times when you see packages, you see a TM, you're, they're putting you on notice, but actually when they show that it's being used in commerce, it changes to an R, something interesting for you to know. And then copyrights. I have instruction manuals, I have books. They're all copyrighted, so you might wanna consider copyrights as well. Again, I'm kind of just briefing through a lot of this. There's a lot deeper that it can go. But I want you to just get the wheel spinning when you do come up with an idea what you need to do to keep your idea moving forward. Or if you're in an invention right now and you're working on it, that maybe some of these things that I'm coming that I'm presenting to you here could give you some good guidance. And it doesn't always have to be exactly in these steps, but these have really worked for me and some and many other people. Like I said, I've been doing this for over 20 years. So kind of went through the flow of, of the way that when I come up with an idea, what do I do for a second, third, fourth, fifth? So let's continue bringing our idea to life. So we decided to manufacture. What are we gonna do? I love the USA, let's manufacture in the USA. So try to find local manufacturers. Uh, there's thomasnet.com, overseas, alibaba.com. You can find different types of resources out there to find manufacturers. You can Google contract manufacturer in your area. See if they do plastics. Maybe you find somebody that does wood or metal specific to what type of product, what, what you think is the right material that you're gonna be using for your invention. But sourcing, I spend a lot of time looking for factories and new factories and making sure that they do a good job for me. I end up meeting them on Skype or WhatsApp or WeChat and, and I end up really understanding what their factories are about. And I do tours even online overseas. And then local ones, I get a chance to see factories in person and I could travel around. It's a, it's a plane ride or it's a drive and I could see local factories and, and see if I could do business with them. And as long as the price is there by the time we're done, that it's gonna be a good price that I can make money. They, of course, they can make money, I can make money and it's the right price for the consumer. I try to get as much local as possible, but sometimes I do have to go overseas and you might have to as well. Finding licensees, how do you find one? So remember licensees is coming up with an idea and wanting a company to manufacture it, distribute it so you can earn a royalty from it. So how do I find a licensee? Well, I go shopping. I go to the store that I envision my idea to be in and I flip over the boxes of, of the packages and I look. One could say manufactured by and distributed by. So I look at the manufactured and I start making a list and I, and I start to research those. Distributors are really salespeople, right? They, they distribute the product. So I start to look around and see who my potential partner can be. Or you find an agent and you have a, a company or a person uh, represent you as a licensing agent. So uh, you can figure out if they're in a particular category or they're broad and they can help you to, to uh, find and connect up with a potential licensee for a licensing deal, of course. All right, let's make some money. Time to make money. What does a licensing deal look like? Well, typically uh, I would work with, uh, with an inventor myself and speak to the licensee and I would talk to them about what their expectations are. How many units do you think you can sell? Do you have something to base it on that you've had good success with? Because I wanna make sure, and you wanna make sure that you're gonna be able to make the product and sell it 
so everybody can earn and we'd have we'd have some good good activity with it so typically uh it could be for a certain amount of time it could be for a territory so maybe the licensee right you're the licensor with the invention they're the licensee so maybe they have distribution in multiple countries or maybe it's in only in the US i said there's a term than that then exclusivity well, most of the time, licensing deals are going to be exclusive It's if it's within that category, industry. So if it's a housewares product and they sell in housewares, they're probably not going to want you to rent the rights to your intellectual property to them to give it to somebody else for them to compete against the same thing. They're using you to have a competitive edge in the market, right? So uh, typically, it's exclusive. If it's in a completely different industry that your current licensee or your potential licensee is in, then maybe they would consider allowing into another category as long as, again, you're not competing against each other. And, and then there's also minimum guarantees. So how many do you think you're gonna sell? If you hit that, then that's great. We're gonna continue and we'll expand and we'll extend our agreements. But if you don't, we have to talk about it. Are you gonna be able to hit the, are you gonna pay the difference of the minimum royalty guarantee or are we going to turn it into a non-exclusive and then we might just terminate the, the deal? You know, I want to be able to maximize the time because when I come up with an invention, a design patent lasts 15 years and a utility patent, otherwise known as a non-provisional patent, will last 20 years. So my time is ticking and it took a, a couple of years also while it's being filed and being examined by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. That's also part of the time of your patent. So you want to try to maximize your time and you want to find a good deal. So I love making deals with licensees and making sure that it's amicable for both parties and fair that they're going to be excited about doing it and you're going to be excited about earning royalties. That's the best part, right? Earning royalties. So we decided to manufacture. So let's make money this way. How can I sell my new product invention, right? You're manufacturing it. So a lot of times I'm working with people and, and this happened to me in the beginning. Okay, I'm excited. I manufactured my product. I have 5,000 units in my garage. Now what? <laughs> so I like to think about that before. So we talk about how many products, let's say you're gonna manufacture it. Let's say you have the 5,000 units in your garage. What would you do if you had it right now? Well, I'm gonna take my prototype or I'm gonna take my pre-production sample and I'm gonna Try to, I'm going to go knock on doors. I'm going to see what kind of opportunities there are with the different retailers that I'm thinking about. But a lot of times these days, you could be really successful being online. You don't have to be in a, a big box retailer to be successful. And look, let's be, let, let's kind of tell it like it is. Look, not every product, not every idea that you have is going to be a home run. Some are going to be singles. You know, a lot of times people, they, let's say you come up with a golf ball and somebody comes and says, Brian, I came up with this amazing golf ball. It does all these tips and tricks and all these things. Okay. And I look around and everybody in the, like everybody on the golf course right now is playing golf. I'm going to be a gazillionaire. Okay. So take your step, take yourself out of the golf course and now look around and ask people, do you play golf? Do you play golf? Do you play golf? Maybe it's a little bit less, right? So you want to be realistic to really understand what your window of opportunity is. So that's why if it's niche, then you're in a specific category. A lot of times people come to me and they give me a, a list of where they think their idea should be sold. And a lot of times I appreciate that it could be something very specific for that. But how can I flip it so I can make it into more of a mass market consumer opportunity? Yes. What you came up with is smart, but maybe it's second, third, or fourth on the list, right? We want to keep our window of opportunity open. Just like I said with the pull ties, I, I made my window of opportunity very large to do really well with this product because I said, how many people have a kitchen at the end of the day? Okay. So online these days, you have Amazon, you have eBay, Etsy, you have all these different walmart.com. You have all these different opportunities to be able to put your product out. So you manufacture it, you send it to them. They could do fulfillment for you. You do fulfillment for yourself and you can make a business out of it. You, you buy, you're, you're making a product for $4. You're selling it uh, 
for ten dollars you have a nice margin there if you give amazon or whoever their cut or a, a sales rep if you have a sales rep going into into the meeting with buyers and and collecting po's for you to to fulfill so these are things to really consider and again you can really turn your idea into something these days as an entrepreneur coming up with an invention and starting a business and look a lot of the manufacturers that i work with also even overseas sometimes people's perceptions are you need 50,000 units 100,000 units gazillion dollars millions of dollars a lot of these factories are willing to work with you to help you to do the tooling if you need which is like these big metal plates that they pour liquid in and it cools off and they open it and it comes out and that's how you make your product so they'll work with you on the tooling or amortize it into the price or maybe they'll help you understand that you're just launching your business so maybe work on a minimum order quantity lower i might pay a little bit more on the price but look i'm going to if i have the margins i'm going to get my business going and i love putting people into business for themselves they don't realize it it's interesting cuz this this one lady that i was working with she came up with an invention and i said uh, you know trying to license it and all of a sudden she converted it into uh, manufacturing i said why don't you manufacture it she goes i don't have the money to do that well how much is it i don't know 25000 to for the tooling and and 3 dollars per unit okay so let's get some quotes got a quote 600 dollars for the mold 80 cents per unit uh, for the product and 3,000 units minimum. Can you believe this? $2,400, right? Uh, eight, uh, 80 cents times $3,000, $2,400, $600 the for $3,000 shipped it overseas, right? Coming in, a couple, couple uh, bucks there. But look, she went into business for herself for three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000, and 3,000 units, 3,000 units, 5,000, 5,000, reorder, reorder, reorder. Proud of her business, building it growing it congratulations so perception sometimes look people are out there they'll help you build a business you just have to find the right partners all that eat sleep invent repeat right so you go through this process you get a product out there to market and you just you have this it keeps coming to you like you're you're in different situations and you're coming up with all these ideas and look i'm constantly picking on myself and watching other people. I guess I'm picking on them too. And I'm realizing that maybe this is something that people could do better. Maybe I can do things to improve somebody's life or to help them or to help me, selfishly to help me, but is it enough of an opportunity for other people? And that's what you need to do. You're gonna be coming up with ideas nonstop. Stop in your tracks, how quick when you're talking to somebody about something and you get distracted, poof, it's gone. Write it down, text yourself, leave yourself a voice message, whatever you can, capture that idea and go through these steps to see, is this an idea that you're gonna put your time, money, energy, and effort into? Is it something that's gonna make you money? I know it feels good, but is it just gonna be an emotional experience, an emotional roller coaster? Or is it something that you're gonna see at the end of the, at the, when you're working on it to see commercialize and come to fruition. And that's the thing is, I help a lot of people to stop and think about, should you work on it or should you just wait for your next idea? And that's okay too. Wait for your next idea. Work on the things that are gonna make you money. Put your energy into things that are gonna give you some kind of return. We're all business people here listening to this, right? We wanna put in and we wanna get something out. So come up with ideas that you think are going to make you money and go through those steps to see if it, it and, and explore that window of opportunity. And it's just going to keep coming up again and again and again. And you just keep going through that and you build up a portfolio and a pipeline. And that's I'm at 15 issued patents. I said I was going to stop and work on what I have, but I just came up with something the other day that I'm exploring. So and then I pulled something out of my archives that I feel like relevant for today. So I'm gonna start working on that again. And that's what you could do, but prioritize, because you'll keep coming up with things, just prioritize. Is what Which one is gonna have the biggest window of opportunity for me to make as much money as I can? Are you inventing to be rich, to be successful in that way? Are you 
inventing to be rich in your mind or to be able to have an issued patent to hang up on a wall. There's a lot of things that people invent things with. Sometimes people do it to donate to the good of the of the world. Other people do it for commercialization and to challenge themselves. So you have to think about who you are. But the ideas and the new ideas are out there. You just have to find them and you have to stop before poof, it's gone. Think up designs. Um, and here's my contact information. I love because I know that people are at all different stages of their idea, whether it was in their head at some point, and now they're thinking about what they came up with, or they're working on their invention right now.